Hi guys, thank you for tuning in to my YouTube channel. I'm Karen Rice and I'm going to be demonstrating an abstract seascape in watercolour. In front of you you'll see I've got some materials here. On the top right is a little plastic box I've made up with some 12 half pans with my own specially selected watercolours. Six of those are Magello Mission Gold watercolours and the others are from Sea of Grass and they're handmade watercolours. I will have a list of these materials in the description below and any questions you may have, please don't hesitate to ask. I've got a plastic palette knife to the right there, a large bristle brush, a smaller brush, a spray bottle and a photograph to inspire me with this abstract seascape. It's a photograph I took when I made a trip to St Ives so um, I just thought it would be quite nice colours for this painting. And lastly, um, Saunders Waterford watercolour paper. As you can see, it's a, a hot press paper, 300 grams, so it's good weight to use. So firstly, I'm just going to wet the paper with my large bristle brush. I'm going to use lots and lots of water with little sort of dry gaps in between as well, which um, so I'll have sort of bit of control of bits and um, paint running into the wet bit but also control where it's wet on dry. I've used an old paper plate here and I'm just using a palette knife to apply the watercolour just to say I'm, I really enjoy this way of painting. It's, a, it's quite new for me, I've only been doing it a short while using watercolour in a very different way, almost like your oil painting, it's such such fun. And I'm using like ochre colours, a Prussian blue, um, some sort of earthy colours as well and I'm applying this with the palette knife and putting it in sort of where the area is a little bit wet but also where it's dry as well so the paint doesn't get too sort of it doesn't run too much I've got a bit of control here but this style of painting is very very different for watercolour it's completely sort of quite loose it's you know it's not like just painting with the brush when you're painting with a palette knife it's got a totally different feel almost like your oil painting but as you can see here the way that blue has sort of mixing with the browns etc is gorgeous just getting a bit more paint here just putting the paint on almost neat like you would with oil paint and as you can see here there's a big puddle of water here and the paint um, and the water is just sort of drifting off and you're never quite sure what sort, of, what sort of thing's going to happen. That's the exciting thing. What's going to happen with my paint? You know, and I'm just open to ideas, open to what the paint's going to do. So here I'm just tilting the paint downwards, letting it all drip off the edge. And look at that exciting thing of those two long runs there on the left-hand side. It's, it's simply gorgeous and very exciting and extremely ex inspiring to me. I often use the brush, the brush is wet, just to tease the paint to get it to run a little bit more. So you've got a little bit of an element of control here. It's sort of controlled chaos almost, but it's so much fun. And I can't tell you how it's just wonderful to do. I love doing it. I love these colors. It's very experimental and very abstract. So as you can see here, I'm just sort of controlling that little run at the bottom there, just pulling it away with the tissue, just to mop up a little bit. And just a close up here of what's going on. The paint will keep changing as it's drying, so you're never quite sure what's gonna happen. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit more of the Prussian blue and the ochre sort of color here with the palette knife. Um, a mistake I've made here, is I've actually applied that on a dry bit of paper. For the sky, not a great idea. It's all right somewhere else, but the sky, you kind of want it to be a little bit wet because you can see the paint sort of gets stuck to the paper, even on hot press. So I've had to really kind of wet the sky here, apply more paint to disguise that area. You could say though that this could be a happy accident and we have to just make do with what we do and then change. And it sort of sometimes comes up with an even better result. So. Just see what happens and go with it. But as you can see here now, the sky is wet and I'm letting it sort of drift to the left-hand corner here. That top middle bit looks stunning. May not end up that way, but I get really excited when it looks like that. And I'm using a little pipette here, loaded with clean water, just to get the paint moving to the right-hand side and using the brush as well, just to smooth off the edges.
I'm applying a little bit of ochre colour now with a smaller brush. This is damp into damp, so the paint's quite thick and the paper's dampish. But I'm going to use the pipette again just to get that paint moving, sort of just pulling the puddle and just let it slide on down to the left hand side. Look at the way that runs at the horizon bit and the way the paint just pulls to the left there. It's, it's stunning. And the thing is, it doesn't always look stunning afterwards because obviously it dries and it dries differently. But sometimes you'll get something that's really special as well. So you have to be kind of open to things all the time and not worry too much. Just enjoy the process, the creativity. So um, I'm tilting again here because I've got that water that's ran from the sky into the left hand side. So just letting that all bleed down to the bottom of the paper. And it's you've got some really exciting effects there, sort of abstract landscapey effects there, lovely. So wetting the sea area now and just picking off that not quite dry paint on the horizon, just letting it sort of pool into the sea area. So I quite like that. Again, you get sort of happy accidents. And that Prussian blue, the Magello Prussian blue, is simply beautiful. It's a, such a lovely colour. Really, um, if you're going to go and buy a Prussian blue, buy that Prussian blue. It's beautiful. You can see there's pigmentation there, up close there, in the actual water. It's created some lovely textures. So just teasing with this brush again, just getting the paint moving. Just seeing what happens. I love that bit, the middle bit on the left there. Just the way it's, that texture that's appearing. Just giving you time here to look at the sort of what's happening with the painting. I'm just mixing a little bit more Prussian blue now. Applying it quite neat onto the horizon, which is still damp, just below the sky there. The paint is quite thick and creamy and you can see it's just running, it's sort of running up and down because both being wet kind of looks almost like a bit distant trees maybe. I don't know, it could be, it, you know, I'm just open to ideas at this stage. I just want to see if anything exciting happens and I can sort of leave it or maybe if I don't like it I just add more paint or spray off a little bit with some water just to see what happens. But you can see that middle bit there where it's running up into the sky looks quite nice. All the time I'm kind of tilting, getting the paint moving so it doesn't just sort of sit there. Um, there was a little bit of a blob there and as you can see I just want to try and sort of get that blob so it doesn't look so noticeable. It was sort of standing out a little bit too much. And just applying a little bit more brown and blue just to that horizon. It's got a bit of warmth in that as well so a nice bit of detail. And I'm almost printing with the palette knife just to see what happens. Again, using a wet brush into that damp sky and just getting that to move a bit because it was quite dense there. So just sort of getting rid of that. Sometimes it can look too, you know, you're covering up too much light of the paper. Because obviously I'm not using any white paint at the moment. So it's just the watercolour. And I want to try to remain a little bit of the transparency still. So I've just started to spray a little bit with my um, spray bottle, just again to try and release a little bit more of that transparency, get rid of, get rid of that dense paint and using the pipette as well, which I have been using so much recently. I've really enjoyed um, using it. I've hardly ever used them before in watercolor painting. So um, it's just quite nice to use, it's a bit different. Again, this bit here in the middle, a bit dense. I'm again sort of almost really stabbing with the brush there just to get it moving, get wriggling it in there. The paint's sort of dried off a little bit. So just getting the paint moving and using the palette knife again, just applying a little bit of warmish, brownish color there. And again, letting it drizzle down to the bottom of the watercolor paper. Tilting it here, just get, you know, just just trying to get something interesting to happen in the foreground, you know, to sort of create a little bit of depth in my abstract painting. Just softening off now with that brush. So just finishing off now. I'm quite pleased with what the what I've achieved here with all the colours, etc. I like the result. Thank you so much for tuning into my YouTube channel. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any comments, please put them in the section below. 
and if you'd like to get updates of my latest videos please subscribe to my youtube channel and just to say thank you again for watching happy painting and see you at the next video bye for now